In this video, we're gonna to put together a pond fishing kit from Walmart. Why Walmart? Because every small town, big town, every town has a Walmart. What's up everybody? Welcome to Fishing with Gramps. That's right, today we're going to put together a pond fishing kit. So let's grab some stuff and head out. Alright, so let's take a look at what I picked up for our basic bass fishing kit that we built from just going to Walmart. Starting with a buzz bait. Great first bait of the day to start with if you get out as the sun's coming up. Then I have two baits that are pretty similar, a spinner bait and a chatter bait. One has the blades that spin around, the other has a blade that rocks back and forth. One might work better in different situations. This one more if you've got a lot of wood and things like that to come through. This one when you have like more open water and edges. Either one will catch you fish. Then I got some zoom flukes. These mimic a small little bait fish that a bass would feed on. Then we picked up the little basket that yum put together now if you don't want to get a little basket like this you can buy bags of you know worms lizards and the little yum dingers so as you can see in here we got some lizards it comes with some hooks we got three different types of stick baits in different colors like a green pumpkin a black and blue a little bit smaller one we got some little bitty trick worms and we got the good old worm itself for Texas rig. So we have a little bit of everything, but again, it's very basic. But since this kit also came with five hooks, I did pick up some weights for the Texas rig. Then I got us some spares just to have. This is a brand new, as in what they're currently selling at Walmart, Abu Garcia Black Max. Like I said, I wanted to build a kit of stuff that you can find currently at Walmart. So this is the 2021 Abu Garcia Black Max. It's a 6.6 six medium action rod, throws baits from quarter up to 5.8, 6 to 12 pound test line. Actually comes with monofilament line on it. Don't know what's on it, probably 8 to 10 I'm guessing, but it was $40. So if you're looking to get started, it also comes with three different Berkeley power bait, which is pretty sweet. Three different types of swim baits. We'll definitely try throwing those. Then off there zip tie here on i don't know we use the pliers to pull away get a little ray cutter in there okay we'll go ahead and finish tightening it up so it's connected to sweet so we'll grab our mono and hook it from the spool open our bail up go ahead and run our line up through the guides all right well let's say we start with one of the baits that came with the rod because why not all right so since this is monofilament line we'll just stick with a simple polymer knot in the eye and back over a simple overhand knot and then we'll drop the bait back through that loop and i normally draw it almost tight with the line we do that so it doesn't burn the line if you get done pulling these tight and all of this is all squiggly you burn the line do not fish with that cut it off and tie it again it's not worth losing a big fish over a shoddy line and you'll only have to do it once before you're kicking yourself all right so you see on the caster it's able to roll either way freely there's only a switch down here on the bottom i switched that over it just won't go back the other direction you have to open the bell to cast this is a pond that a co-worker and i found at work we actually drove out and took a look at it during lunch one day and so i figured i'd come out this weekend to shoot this video and see if there's any fish in this place this feels so awkward normally i'll cast with my right and then immediately switch it to my left so i'm gonna have a pretty awkward looking retrieve but yeah i'm sitting in a chair i will just move up and down this little dam oh something else i didn't do was tighten the drag down I got bit while I was sitting there in the pads. Look at that. Look at that. First cast, I got bit while we were sitting there in the pads. That is crazy. <laughs> Caught a dink when I went to go adjust the drag. Look at that. 
little dink to start the day that is insane on that natural swim bait right when it got to those pads <laughs> i twitched it and dropped it a little bit and went to go set the drag so i can actually lift the bait out of the water and we caught this little dink that is insane how funny is that that is hilarious let's just let's get this little guy back in the water Look at there. I, I didn't even have to buy anything else to catch a fish. The little the little swim bait that came with the pole caught the first fish. Back down here by the water. Thanks for playing, little fella. Wow, that is hilarious. Right here next to where we're sitting. I guess since we've already proven that we could catch one on that thing, that I should... Go ahead and move to one of the other baits but i feel like i gotta cast it more than once that was funny that was really funny right here just trying to lift it out of the water all right so so since we proved that worked let's uh Let's move on to the next. Talk about one for one, one bait, one cast, one fish. Make sure I gather up all my trash. I'll just put it all in this little tub in my deck here. All right, pull everything tight. Let's do a weightless Texas rig this time. I'll just kind of dart it off. All right. Poked it in, pulled it out. Run it through this little young dinger here. Lay it straight. There we go. All right, now we'll go to soft plastic. And again, if you're coming to this video brand new to bass fishing, go to my playlist for how to fish or how to bass fish and I did a series sitting in the man cave talking about all the different soft plastic rigging techniques so you get familiar with them so as you watch videos like this and you see me using them you know how to set them up so this one I'm going to try to cast and work along the edge of some of these pads and we'll just let it sink a little and then give it some twitches i had a little grass on that uh on that swim bait so i know there's some grass down there that this thing can tick off of nope i gotta be careful not to get my line caught up in the in the pads there or i won't feel or see the line moving if i get a bite I had a boil of a fish right there at the bank again. Uh -huh. All right, let's cast this one. So if you're brand new to spinning rods, I did a couple videos on those. Be sure to go check those out. But basically what I do now that I've got the bait tied on, I will take my finger and hold it kind of like a trigger against the rod here and then open my bail. And I will draw the rod back behind my shoulders. And then when I get, I feel the momentum of the bait going forward. I let my finger off of the rod and it lets that string go and cast it out. And I just fling it out. And then I will let it land and I will close the bale by hand. And now I'm just kind of popping that bait. I need to really try to keep it out of those pads. Yeah, because I'm pulling it into the pads. Let's try, let's try getting a little more out in front of us. I don't want to get caught up over there where we can't do anything if we get bit. I'm actually going to take a shot way out there in the middle of nowhere looking for cruising fish. Since the sun's not beating down directly over here yet on the water, there's still a lot of shade from the trees. 
they may still be just out cruising in the open looking for for bait fish and then when the sun gets straight overhead and beating down on them that's when they'll pull up under those pads because they like the shade like the rest of us I got a little water activity over there. Oh, there's a fish. I hope he's gonna come out and try to jump. Now with these these medium action spinning rods, you can't slam the hook home super hard. I'm gonna have to go down and get that guy. Because the action is so light. But normally, if you just lift it up real good and start reeling, that weight will come through the soft plastic and hook them up in the corner of the mouth. Like we did this little fella right here. I hear my, my Crocs are squeak squeaking. I need to put them in four-wheel drive so my Feet don't slip out when I'm walking back up the hill. It's kind of funny. But there we go. Fish number two on the weightless Texas rig. All right, let me go ahead and get my... I always try to carry a pair of pliers with me in case you got to do this, but just turn that hook and pull it right out of his mouth. Another little dink, but hey, a fish is a fish when you're out fishing. We'll take them all day. Skadoosh. All right, so there's one on the weightless Texas rig. So let's, for fun, we will grab another one of our stick baits. This one's a little bit different color, but this one we're gonna wacky rig. We're gonna come right through the middle. Tie my drag up just a skosh. All right, so now we caught one on the little swim bait, the Texas rig weightless stick bait. That's a yum dinger. Now we're gonna go with a smaller dinger. Wacky rig. I keep switching hands, forgetting that I haven't switched the thing. All right, this is a little lighter of a bait, so I think I'm gonna have to go stand down there on the bank. I've been resting for a little bit. Are you kidding me? Look at that. There's another one. There is another one resting right in that little spot. <laughs> we just hauled in number three. It's a dink fest, but hey, when you're learning the bass fish, every one of these is awesome. Must be a little pocket of them right there. That is great. Looky there. So, now we caught three. Now the wacky rig's on the books. Again, little bass, but hey, bass is a bass is a bass. I was hoping there would be something in here and we're finding fish. So that's, that's really good. I'll take that all day. I'm definitely gonna have to come out here in my kayak. All right, little fella, thanks for playing. How awesome is that? All right, so go ahead and put the dinger back in there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this hook off. Let's say we bust out the old spinner bait. My favorite, favorite of all of the baits growing up. All right, now we got a little heavier bait. Should be able to make a little farther cast. And while I'm sitting here, I am going to go ahead and switch this handle to the other side because I know if I'm going to be trying to reel a little faster instead of going slow. So all you do is you unscrew this side, pull the handle out from this side, put it in the other side, then drop that screw back in and tighten it back down. Now this spinnerbait might be a skosh heavy for this 
rod and reel set up. I should have picked up like a finesse spinner bait, which one is a little bit smaller since I knew I was going to be using a lighter action rod like this. But let's see how it does. Got a good long cast out there. Oh yeah, I can see that. I can see my spinner bait in the water. But with all these pads here, I know I'm going to have to get down there closer to the water. What do you think? We're going to get bit right here again? Shkadoonk. Nope, but we found the found some of the weeds. Oh, there we go. All right, let's take a walk down here. Let's get a little closer. Wow, three fish on three baits already. That's insane. And again, anytime you catch one bass, big or small, it has a potential to be a big one. If you're doing something that triggers the little ones, you're doing the same thing that will trigger a bigger one. And it just also depends on actually what's in the pond that you're fishing. There may be some bigger bass here. They may be hunkered down out there in the middle in the summertime. Look at that. Another one right there in that same spot. There is a whole mess of bass sitting right there. Four bass out of that same different little pocket. You go ahead and, you go ahead and jump back in there. I touched you so you count. Four bass right there in that little pocket. That is amazing. Let's shoot down over this way. Maybe see if we can find somebody bigger playing in here. That would be funny if I caught a fish on every bait that we brought. Oh, there's a bigger one. Oh, he didn't. I didn't get the hook in him. That was a bigger fish. I saw him come up and slam it. That's a good sight. That's what I'm talking about. He came up and hammered it. not sure if he went for the the body with the hook in it or the flash of that blade but uh definitely had one definitely had one that was probably in the pound and a half range i like seeing that throw it out there in a little bit deeper and see what see if we got anybody out there roaming around that was a pretty decent fish See if we can get his attention again. Yeah, he might have he might have hit the blades on that one. That was kind of cool. I don't know if it picked up on the camera or not, but I could definitely see it here with the naked eye because the water is really clear. Now, me with limited mobility, I'm pretty much stuck to where I can walk and sit. But uh, I might have to bring my kayak up here one of these days fish up here after work and uh really really see what's in here but we're doing a basic pond video so far so good we've caught a fish on every bait we've thrown yet look at that it just looks so good coming through the water look how many little bait fish come eat me i figured i have to drive the truck up and down this dam and fish you know various different areas to to even get a bite <laughs> and we're already four for four but yeah i'm throwing the spinner bait again because a little bit bigger fish over there has me has me curious to see if he'll come back and play again but oops, a little farther than i wanted there we go i can see that bait all the way we'll have to grab those baits and move down the bank a little bit see if we can find i'm just taking my time and letting that slow roll across there looking for a bass that might be out in the open kind of cruising but i'm not sure how deep it is out there either so you never know I could be in it could be the deep part right here and shallow over there I don't know spinner bait will pick up everything around it because it's got rotating blades all right let's get get another long cast over here and then we'll move down the dam a little bit since we've already done the work over here notice I'm not trying to really reel it fast I'm just got enough to get those blades going there's a Colorado blade right here the little one that's what that but that's what kind that is and it's chrome silver and then you got the gold willow leaf blade. So you're throwing off two different types of flashes along with having the white body of the spinner bait itself. So you're giving that fish not just vibration, not just flash, but three different kind of colors all in one little thing to really try to trigger a bite. All right, one more over here and then we'll move down. Now when you get into little bigger baits, 
even if you stick with the spinning rod, you want to get a little heavier one. So you want to get a medium heavy. They're a little harder to find in most box stores. I do have an Abu Garcia Veritas in the truck with me that I bought at Walmart last year or the year before. And it's a medium heavy, a little bit stouter rod. I've got braid on it. Again, I'm sticking with just a basic bass beginning kit that you can find. You know, the stuff that you can find in your local Walmart because everybody has a Walmart in their town. If you're compromised because of health conditions with the stuff that's going on in the world today, obviously we want everybody to be safe. You know, you can shop online and get all the same stuff from Amazon or somewhere else. But my whole goal in this video was you could basically do a one-stop shop. You know, say you end up going on vacation somewhere and camping for the weekend and you didn't realize that there was a spot that may be a great fishing spot at the campground. You know, oh, let me run to Walmart real fast and, and see what I can get just to get maybe maybe get some fish i know we've already caught one on the spinner bait and just had another strike probably should move on to a different bait that bass is chasing it he followed it all the way back to the bank he is right there another little dinker but another bass that's in here willing to willing to bite and chase that's really cool since we already caught one on the spinner bait let's go ahead and cut him off we'll put him in the drawer Let's go back to another soft plastic. We will go, let's do a fluke this time. And now again, we're back to a lighter bait, which is what this medium action rod is suited for. So we'll go ahead and fling our little fluke out there and probably should keep him away from the pad. Get him over the pads, I'm gonna let him sink. Now this one sinks really slow. So what I'll do is I let it sink and then, oh, I saw the flash of a fish, yep. Looky there. Again, just this this pond is full of dinks, but hey, we don't care. Looky there. I have found the Dink Master Pond. Looky there, first one on the fluke. How crazy is that? We keep catching fish right when we right when we first time on. Man, gorgeous little fish. Oh, monster bass is having a sale. If you're on the VIP list, you know about it. You know, Debo can claim to be the Dink Master, but I'm literally five for five on monster dinks today. Beat that, Debo. It's a challenge. Dink Fest 2021. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so we've caught fish every way, pretty much weightless. Put our fluke back in the bag. Sun's getting up. It's getting a little bit warmer. A little toastier out here. 20 minutes later. I guess they don't like the lizard. Maybe we'll have to try the worm. We'll swim up by those pads and then we'll, we'll go ahead and drive down to the end of the dam. See if we get any luck. I thought we would have got something off of these pads here somewhere. Oh man. That's not where I wanted it. That's... We'll get it a little more out in the open and then swim it to where we want it. Cast it a little farther to the right. There we go. I like lizards so much because there's a lot of plastic to it. You don't have the tail that's the only kind of trigger. The legs have a lot of little flippers in it too. But I don't know, maybe they just think it's a little too green for the water. I don't know. I'm really shocked. I honestly thought when I looked at the beginning of this, out of all the soft plastics in this water, the lizard would have been the jam. All right, a couple more over here, and then we're just going to go ahead and move down. Oh, wait. My line feels heavy. There we go. <laughs> the dink fest continues. Look at there. Just a matter of time. Had to be patient. Skadoosh. All right, Mr. Lizard, you have done your job just when I was getting ready to give up on you. Look, and they know the lizard's so good, they put tons of them in here. All right, so we're going to stick this worm on real fast. And then go ahead and move on down there into the bend. 
Oh, make sure I got the bottom of the bottom of the worm is the flat side. So into the bend, twist it out, put the eye in, put my thumb where I want it to come out, straight up through the middle, and just expose it back into the skin. All right, let's go ahead and move down to the end and see if we can catch another one. What I'm gonna try to do is cast it near pads, but out from the pads, trying to pull them out from under the cover that they're hiding in, looking to ambush. And I may have to swim the worm, or I may have to pop the worm. We'll see kind of what they want. Let the tail action of the worm and the sparkle of the worm draw their attention. Now this area has been in the sun for the most of the day since the sun came up. It was the first thing kind of uncovered. So it may be the warmest section. We may be better off being back down on the other end where we started. That's been kind of the shady all day. I didn't have any intention of doing a like a challenge today. I just wanted to see if there was any fish here to know whether here to, to come back here or not and then talk about the baits for the little pond bundle I've been talking about. We'll speed the retrieve up here a little bit. Maybe not give them as good a look. Have them do a reaction strike. Sometimes if you give them too much time to look at it, they'll be like, ah, no, I know that's not what I'm looking for. But if you kind of buzz it past them a little faster, they may just hit it out of a reaction. Yeah, I hear fish moving across the way. The pad's over there for sure. Now, something you might experience every now and then fishing with a Texas rig that's unpegged is I've had times when you cast it out and then the, there's somebody tapping at it. I could have a fish. Let's, let's see. Yep, I did. Right. Come here, dinker. You're a bigger dinker. I think you're the heaviest one of all. He definitely big fish right there still a dink but hey we caught you not even a pounder but another bass right there hooked in the schnoz <laughs> our slam continues pardon me while i hydrate it's hot how amazing is that that is awesome all right, folks, as much as I'd love to stay and catch one on a chatterbait, you know what they say about it, can't take the heat? It's time for me to get out the kitchen. It is just too hot out here. It's in the 90s already, going on noon, and I can't keep the GoPros running, so we're going to call it from there. But again, beginner pond fishing, small lake fishing, bass kit for the beginners, and all stuff that you can pick up from Walmart. If you like videos like this hey let me know give it a thumbs up helps youtube promote it to other people looking for stuff like this drop me a comment down below if you're an experienced angler and you were going to advise somebody what to get to start out with what would you send them out with i pick the basic baits that i can find at my local walmart a basic rod basic reel and we caught fish didn't catch any monsters but who cares we're bass fishing we're just out here enjoying the beautiful outdoors making some memories one cast at a time. Mm -hmm.